This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Hope you're having a good day today in Southern California. We appreciate your spending a little time with us. My name is Ron Stutz, and Logan, it's great to be back with you. Yeah, Ron, great to be back. Another uh, another week, good day of radio here, and excited for the, for a good show. We're going to talk about a lot of important things here, all having to do with getting you to and through retirement. But the most important information I can give out to you is Logan Sadler's phone number, because that will get you a discovery meeting, an opportunity to get to know Logan. He can get to know you, and it's not going to cost you one penny. And there's no obligation either. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. If you are a regular listener to the show, you know that number by heart, probably. 888-823-PLAN. Hey, by the way, if you're listening for the very first time, we're glad you're here. Hey, Logan, did you see this? Missouri residents last week got an emergency alert on their phone saying, Gotham City, purple and green Dodge, 3700. <laughs> this was obviously a Batman reference. A purple and green Dodge mm-hmm. 3700 GT was the Joker's car in the 1989 Tim Burton movie. <laughs> now, this was apparently a test message that was accidentally deployed as an emergency alert to all phones in the state. And with that new movie, The Batman, coming out, yeah. I guess it was appropriate, but a lot of people probably freaked out when they heard that. Yeah, if you didn't, if you didn't, not a Batman person, you probably had no idea what was going on. But that is that is quite funny. But I could see where I, some people might be a little uh, a little frightened. But um, yeah, that's that's interesting. And I, who doesn't love? I, I know that one. The Tim Burton one was uh, was hit and miss for some people. I enjoyed yeah. it. Um, I, I thought it was a good movie. But yeah, that's funny how they. Uh, they were able to send Missouri residents must have been a little confused. Yeah, and I would love to know who was actually responsible for that. I have a feeling that it was probably, a, you know, supposed to be a joke. And uh, yes. whoever did it thought it was really funny, and a lot of people didn't, you know. Well, so. I wonder if his boss thinks it was funny. But... <laughs> I don't know. If he, It depends on whether he still has a job, I guess. But, uh, exactly. Uh, let's talk about game night. We got uh, lots of, you know, awesome. folks uh, over the past holiday period got together with their families and played played games. Uh, mm-hmm. board games or whatever the case may be and there are of course video games and you know uh, football games and basketball games yep. and everything but uh, I'm just wondering what we can learn about retirement planning from uh, popular board games for example Monopoly what can we learn about retirement planning from the great game of Monopoly <laughs> well I have an aunt who would always joke that Monopoly is you know the game of life there but um you know it's uh it's Monopoly is one of those games I think is a really it's a really uh, insightful game for a lot of people and the one thing about Monopoly is if your opponent has a Monopoly it can really spell bad news for you and I think that does translate into portfolio in, into uh, into an investments into portfolios into retirement planning if you have a Monopoly of one asset or one asset type or one individual security it could really really be a bad, uh, bad situation in some cases, right? Having too much in, we've all heard that term, uh, all your eggs in one basket, right? I think that's something that a lot of people do have in their portfolios and not necessarily know it. They might have all their money in one particular mutual fund or into only two or three mutual funds. And so you not having the proper diversification in retirement can be a very difficult uh, risk to overcome. And I, I have a client of ours who, uh, you know, I love to tell stories. And this is one of my favorite ones. He uh, He's done a really great job saving for retirement, done a really, uh, really good job just preparing for retirement. And also, he's, he's just self-made. He's somebody who uh, I guess anybody could respect. He's worked hard and, and built a business and done everything you need to do along the way. The only problem I have is right. He comes in and as an advisor, my job is to tell you, uh, you know, what I what my findings are of your portfolio and what I think we could do a little bit differently. And uh, it's funny because he has majority of I would say about thirty five percent of his portfolio is in one individual stock. Okay, and so um, that is definitely what I'd like to call monopoly, right? I think a lot of people in the investment world they say you typically don't want to have it's between five and ten percent of someone's portfolio. You typically don't want to have it in one individual stock or one individual security. That way, you have proper diversification. So this client, of course, he has he does have around two million dollars uh, of investable assets, 
and he has about 35% of that in one individual stock. So we were able to offset and do different things to be able to offset that risk. So you always want to make sure you're staying as diversified and don't fall victim to that monopoly uh, that monopoly feeling. And it's something that definitely I've seen in portfolios and in, in investment portfolios throughout the years. Yeah, absolutely. We can learn a lot about uh, retirement planning from the game of Monopoly. And uh, what about a, a somewhat more modern game, uh, Trivial Pursuit? Uh, yeah. I would imagine there's a lot we could get out of that too, right? Yeah, Trivial Pursuit is one of those that to be successful at it, it really requires quite a bit of knowledge and a wide range of, of topics. And uh, successful retirement planning is very similar. You need to you need to understand, and I always talk about this a lot on the show, but it's so true. You need to understand more than just Social Security, more than just Medicare, but you really got to know how to understand how to create income from investments tax strategies, estate planning, and a lot of other implications that come up throughout retirement planning. Having an advisor or, or even, you know, if you're doing it yourself, having expertise in just one topic, you know, you might know stocks, but you might not know how life insurance works or how other annuities work or how tax planning works. And so not having that array of services or having that array of, of expertise in different areas, it can get tricky. And it's something where I always like to tell people, you know, one of the things our firm really does pride ourselves on is really looking at more than just investments or more than just, you know, what we could position you in, but really how could we take a look at the overall plan and make a difference over a five or a 10 or a 15, 20 year retirement retirement and really make sure we're maximizing all of those all of those areas that we need to to have that successful retirement. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. Once again, Logan at Regary Financial, offices in Hemet and Redlands. And the familiar phone number to call to get a discovery meeting going with Logan is 888-823-PLAN. You can talk about your retirement and the kind of lifestyle you've always wanted when you get to that point in your life. How about the game that uh, a lot of kids played, uh, very young kids, very appealing mm -hmm. to them, Candyland. You know anything oh, yeah. about Candyland? I do. Have you ever, have you ever played Candyland? Uh, well, yeah, I have with my kids. You know? Yeah, it's a it's one of those games. It's it's a fun game. I still play with with my niece and nephew and all them. And it's it's a great it's a great game. It's one of those ones where you might think you have a, a tactical approach to it, but there's is really no no system or any of that. Right? It's all basically a hundred percent luck. Just pick of the draw. And mm -hmm. so I think that translates a lot into into what I see with a lot of investors is. We sometimes see investors who got lucky on one investment or they were able to uh, have this one investment or this one stock that just did extremely well. And that kind of creates that overconfidence, just like Candyland. You start to get a little confident, a little too confident. And so I see a lot of people that have done, you know, listen, the last, like I say all the time, the last five, six years, you know, cryptocurrency, stocks, real estate, a lot of that over the last five years has done historically well. Um, there's a lot of people out there that have done very well picking investments here or there. But what I always say is it's very, very important to look at during these bull runs like we've had, you should be doing well. And I think that's important to note. But I see a lot of people getting way too aggressive or way too overconfident in, in certain sectors or in one particular investment. And it could have a lot of implications in the long run. It down, Not good implications, I guess you could say. So it's something where you really need to understand that you you got to have a systematic approach and make sure that you know what type of risk and all that that you're in and not just doing luck of the draw like Candyland. We're pretending that it's game night here on today's show at the Financial Beat. And uh, what about the game of risk? Very popular for a yeah. very long time. Can we learn anything from that? Yeah, absolutely. And I kind of touched on a, t a little bit of it in Candyland. But yeah, the game Risk, I mean, uh, you know, it's appropriately named, right? Because you definitely take some chances and, and enjoy a big payoff, or you could end up taking a big step backwards. And risk in the portfolio is no different. Uh, Taking risk uh, isn't necessarily a bad thing. When clients come in and they have an aggressive portfolio, I don't, you know, smack them on the hand and say bad job. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. You just really got to understand the risk that you're in and make sure it's something that you're comfortable with. Because what I see a lot is a lot of clients will be uh, aggressive or have a lot of risk in the portfolio and not necessarily understand it. They think that they were being somewhat moderate or conservative. And it's something where you really need to understand the implications of how aggressive you are. And the biggest thing I always like to talk about with clients, I don't really necessarily talk about returns a lot 
during out during our meetings, especially throughout our discovery process, because returns is something that everybody's okay with, right? I mean, if, if the mar if you're making money, typically everybody's happy. Obviously, we always want more, but I think what a lot of the conversation with us translates to is number one, planning, and number two, risk. I think that's very important for people to understand. If we want this type of return, you have to be willing to accept this type of risk. And that is something that's very, very important when building out any good retirement plan. Okay, one more game I want to ask you about here, and I would imagine you're going to say there's a lot of strategy involved in this one. How about Battleship? Oh, yeah, Battleship. I think everyone's played that game. And um, I think Battleship is one of those ones where you're definitely trying to guess about what your other opponent's ship location is, without obviously without seeing the board. And retirement planning is really... Uh, similar. A good advisor can typically see the board even if you can't. And obviously, what I mean is when you hire a good advisor, they don't have a crystal ball of what exactly is going to happen in the market. But as the advisor, we have seen people make uh, bad decisions or make the wrong decision. And now we're able to help other clients advise them to make those not make those same bad decisions. And I think a lot of a lot of the advisors out there might do this, might not. But I know our firm. One of the biggest things we're really big on is we help people retire every day. Right? All of our clients are planning and preparing for retirement or have retired. We've helped hundreds of people retire throughout our 25 years of being open. And I think that's one thing is that does give us the confidence and a lot of the clients the confidence in us to make sure we're guiding you the proper way into that retirement. Because again, we help people retire every day, but you probably don't retire every day, right? Hopefully you only have to do it once. And so <laughs> that's one thing when you make that when you make that call, come in for the discovery meeting, that's exactly what you could expect. We might play a board game or two, but really uh, most of the hour is really going to be spent taking a deep dive into your retirement plan, making sure we don't have any monopolies or we're not taking too much risk. And that's exactly what you could expect at that discovery meeting. Yeah, I know a lot of people out there right now are on the verge of making that phone call and that number to set up a discovery meeting for you with Logan Sadler, same guy you hear on the radio, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. It's important to point out that uh, Regary Financial has wonderful relationships, partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists, all the folks who can help uh, offer well-rounded guidance and everything related to your financial life, especially when it comes to getting to and through retirement. Again, you can get a discovery meeting at no cost with no obligation involved, and the number to call is 888-823-PLAN. Please remember, Regary Financial has offices in Hemet and Redlands, and wherever you happen to be in Southern California, Logan would love to talk to you and get to know you. One more time, 888-823-PLAN. There's more coming up on the other side of this timeout. Thanks for listening to today's edition of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. We all know Congress has approved trillions of dollars in spending the past year with stimulus packages, infrastructure plans, and other programs. It's all on top of the tens of trillions of dollars of debt our nation already owes. Yet we're living with some of the lowest tax rates in history. Now, how long do you think that's going to last? Learn how you can prepare for future tax implications by watching Logan Sadler of Regary Financial's exclusive webinar, How Tax Planning Changes Through the Four Stages of Retirement. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000, and we'll text you back a link to the webinar right away. Text ADVICE to 21000 and make sure you don't have to pay a cent more in taxes than you have to. To access the free webinar right now, text advice to 21,000. You're listening to The Financial Beat, the show that makes sure your financial plan has the perfect pitch. Welcome back to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. Logan is the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer. If you've been thinking about retirement and what it's going to take you to get to and through retirement, you have certainly tuned into the right show today. The Financial Beat is all about that. Logan Sadler can help you plan for your retirement, help you avoid critical mistakes, 
and help you optimize all your opportunities. The number to call if you'd like to get in touch with Regary Financial is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Offices in Redlands and also Hemet. You can find out more about the, the company and about the show by going to financialbeatradio.com. That's financialbeatradio.com. But the all-important phone number is 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN. That'll get you a conversation that's not going to cost a penny and not going to obligate you to do anything at all either. You know, Logan, I know that you try and stay on the good side of the law, and uh, we both try and avoid uh, run-ins with the law as much as possible. But As much as you can. Every week on this show, we talk about a crime of the week, and some of these things are just ridiculous federal crimes. And I guess they're on the books because somebody tried to do this particular thing at least once. And they <laughs> That's the to, sad part. <laughs> yeah. They wanted to make sure it didn't happen again or didn't keep happening. Did you realize that it's a federal crime to let a dead wild donkey get turned into products for sale? I, I've never thought about that, honestly. You know. No, I've done a lot of reading, and that's never popped up. I never, uh, and I've never ran into that circumstance where I where I thought I was breaking the law doing that. So, um, yeah, like you said, there's so many of these of these federal crimes that are just crazy that it even has to be written down. But I guess, like you said, it's written for a reason because somebody thought it was a great idea. Somebody tried to sell off pieces of a dead donkey at some point, and then then decided yeah. to enact a law that would keep other people from doing that. So, hey. Uh, yeah, and okay. someone tried to buy parts of a dead donkey. Apparently, right? That means if it's if it's if it's sold, someone was buying it. So that's just crazy, right? It's all about consumer demand, I guess. You know, <laughs> what somebody's right. willing to pay, but that's kind of ridiculous, really. Hey, let's get back to some reality here uh, and talk about some things you can't trust. And uh, we're going to mix in a few humorous things here, and uh, okay. but a lot of these things will be uh, having to do with getting to and through retirement. So it, it's really a serious discussion. Let's talk about some things that you should not place your trust in, both inside and outside of the financial world. First of okay. all, should you place your trust in gas station sushi? <laughs> um, no, I cannot answer that quick enough. I, I would say no, probably never. Uh, it's funny you brought that up. I have a really good friend of mine, Tom, and uh, he he loves gas station sushi. I, I don't know what it is, uh, I, I, but I would you know if I had a list of uh, recommendations not to do, that would be very very high on there for myself. Yeah, mine too. That's no question about that. Here's a, no. a somewhat more serious question here, having to do with your finances. Should you trust people who say they've developed a system for timing the stock market? Oh, man. Yeah, that's a very popular one. You know, the biggest thing with that is if, if someone's found a system to time the market successfully, I always like to say, you know, why are they selling a program to you? Or why are they selling education to you? That's what I always like to say. You know, if, they, if they're so successful at it, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't be here. Right? They'd be on a beach in Hawaii or wherever, wherever their dream place is. So I would say the thing with developing a system for timing the stock market, most of the time, if you hear somebody say, we're really good at timing the stock market, it's, be, it's probably somebody you should not do business with. You know, <laughs> nobody has that crystal ball. None of us know what's going on. Obviously, there's indicators out there that we do look at fund from a fundamental standpoint, but we never have any idea. And so what I always like to say is most of these stock market timers or real estate timers, they've done a really good job during booming markets like, like right now. And so that's something where it's really, really hard to believe that, as well as most people don't do it successfully over a period of time. Like I say, you might get lucky here or there, but eventually you're going to mess up or, or stumble. And it, it might cost you a lot of money. So I'd be very, very hesitant to, to do business with someone like that or, or to, to jump into that. Make sure you understand exactly what's going on and looking at a long track record, not a year or two. Here's a really good one for uh, folks out there looking for somebody they can trust. Uh, seriously. Um, <laughs> they're internet ads for hot local singles who are looking for love <laughs> and they really want to talk to you. Is that is that something you can trust? That's great. We're, so we're going way off script here. Um, yeah, no, I would definitely say no. That's something you probably don't want to trust. I think, uh, you know, obviously there's dating apps out there for those of you that are in the single realm or there's still the good old fashioned way meeting people along the way. So I would probably say not to trust that. That's probably a really good scam that, uh, that gets a lot of people. And I'm, and I'm sure just like the, the federal crimes we cover, there is a lot of, uh, of, of internet ads like this because they probably get a lot of people. So yeah. uh, be very, very hesitant on that. How about advisors who say there are no fees in your portfolio? Should you trust that? Yeah, probably not. You know, I think the biggest thing with fees, I always like to say is, you know, the 
you want to kind of word your word your words differently when you're proposing that to your advisor. You want to ask what are the overall cost of my portfolio? Yeah. Because there's a lot of different ways to structure it. It could be a planning fee, it might be an expense ratio, it might be an advisory fee, it might be a management fee, and then there might be like annuity products have other stuff like some annuity products, not all of them, but they do have what's called like an income rider fee or a death benefit cost, right? So there's a lot of different ways to code that. There is a cost most of the time in any investment. And I always say costs aren't bad. You just want to understand what they are and what value you're getting in return. Now, obviously, there becomes a point when there are certain products out there, some people are paying 2 or 3%, and it's just way too much, right? But there's also, you just want to make sure you understand the cost you're paying and also what are you getting in return for those costs. So you know, typically the advisor that says there's zero fees in this product, it might be, there is some fixed annuities out there that do have some zero fees. But if you're talking stock market and you're managed, someone's managing your money and there's money moving in and out there, there probably is a cost involved. You just got to figure out the right way to ask it. Okay. Here's something that you are likely to get in a letter or probably more likely to get in an email. How about a Nigerian prince who needs your help and you can get <laughs> millions of dollars? Is that something you can trust? Yeah, you probably just got to send him ten thousand dollars up front to get him out of help, and then he'll send you he'll he'll send you interest in return, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it it's we do deal with a lot of seniors, right? A lot of our a lot of our client base has been with us a long time, and some of them came on board in their sixties, and now they're in their eighties. And so we do have a lot of calls where people will call our office and say, "Hey, uh, uh, does this sound right?" Or I, I they said I need to send money to my grandson who's in, like in like you said in Nigeria or whatever. And there's just so much of the scamming going on, and it used to be more more targeted towards the senior community, but now it's everywhere. You're getting texts on your phone or emails. And so you really just want to say, you know, cybersecurity and all that stuff is so, so important. And it's something I know we do a lot of it here at our firm. We actually have an IT guy on staff to make sure uh, we're limiting uh, breaches like this because it's something where it's just getting so many people. Yeah, it really is ridiculous. And I would put, um, you know, these scam calls that you get on the phone all the time in that same category. I get so sick and tired of those and, things. And you, you remember they used to call the house phone and you just uh, you ever wanted to stop answering their house phone and yeah. somehow they got the cell phone now yeah. right yeah. I, I <laughs> they track you down yeah and i'm one of those rare people we still have a landline in our house oh yeah okay. i mean you know we got cell phones but we still have a landline because there are some older relatives who have that number and yep. i've gotten to the point where i just barely even notice it when it rings because yeah. every time my curiosity will get the best of me i say well maybe uncle so-and-so has died or whatever yeah. you know yeah. and i answer and would you phone. like to extend your car warranty yeah. right <laughs> well it's, it's not usually that it's like i answer the phone and say hello and there'll be a good like one two three seconds before somebody comes on yeah. and then it's some ridiculous thing i mean it's yep. uh you know it gets so annoying i just whatever happened to the do not call list yeah, there's none of those anymore. Somehow they got the cell phones, they text you, they call you, they'll email yeah. you, they, they track you down. It's just so, so annoying. Uh, how <laughs> about um, uh, something else that you can or cannot trust, you tell us, a stock market that hasn't crashed in more than 10 years? Can you put in any faith in that? You know, this is a big talking point for, I know, for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of the clients I meet with, you know, it's something where, okay, we've been on a really good run. Like right now, it's been basically a good 10-year run of, of market of markets trending upward. So it's something where a lot of people um, are, are concerned with that. And I always like to say that I never bet on the stock market short term. And, when, you know, if, you have, if you're getting in the market for a month and then you need the money at the end of the month, it's probably not a great idea for you to invest. And, uh, you know, Warren Buffett has a, what he has a classic saying, I might be out of context, but I think he typically says, you know, you don't invest your money in, in the individual stock unless you plan on holding it for 10 years. You know, there's certain things out there where you don't want to get caught playing it too risky because, yeah, the stock market has been on a good run. We are due for some pullback at some point. It might be next month. It might be five years from now. We have no idea. But historically, the stock market does do a pullback anywhere between seven to 10 years is typically when you'll see a market pullback. So you really got to make sure that you're in a position to where if the market did drop, you're still okay. You know, you want to make sure that you don't have too much at risk or you don't have too much of your income will be, you know, will be uh, in jeopardy. You want to make sure you have things properly planned and diversified. And, and again, those of you guys listening to the show, you guys know uh, we're big preachers on that. You want to make sure that you have an income plan, a, uh, an asset allocation plan for your portfolio to make sure that we're not taking on too much risk at the wrong time. And, you know, that's something where I wouldn't say you can necessarily not not trust in it or trust in it. It's just necessarily you want to make sure you trust in your plan. And that's what's most important because again, 
you know, the stock market has a pretty good pattern over the last hundred years or so, but there is uh, different differentiators in it like right now. So it's something where you just want to make sure you have that plan covered and making sure that you'll be okay if the market did pull back for a year or so or two years or so that you would still be okay financially. And that's something, again, we always pride ourselves on. You know, those of you guys listen to the show before know we're big preachers and making sure that you have a developed plan for retirement. You're making sure you have a good distribution plan, an income plan, plan and making sure that you're taking the proper risk that you're comfortable with so that way if the market does crash you're still in a good you're still in good shape logan i know that uh, a lot of people out there you have built up trust with them over the years a lot of clients and uh, a lot of folks have uh, trusted regary financial for even longer than that and uh, they may be looking for a financial advisor they can trust right now and uh, they're intrigued by some of the things you've talked about in uh, today's show and uh, i'm just going to give out the phone number in just a moment here so they can arrange one of those discovery meetings, but uh, what kind of a conversation are you going to have with someone for the very first time? Yeah, our, our discovery meeting is really intended for people that ha- haven't had a financial advisor before, or if they have a financial advisor, but they think they, they are not getting everything that they thought they deserved, or they're just looking for a second opinion. And that's what the discovery meeting's for. It's not where we're going to come in and show you a fancy object and move money or do anything in the first meeting. We have a developed process. Again, we've been around a long time, so we have a very good process that we call our client engagement process. So step one is the discovery meeting. We're going to spend an hour together with you and your spouse or you and really get to understand who you are, what your situation looks like. And if we can get if we can make any, if you already do have a plan, if we can make any adjustments to maybe make that plan more successful. If you don't have a plan, start start laying the groundwork for how to get that plan in motion and get things moved to where they need to be. But again, we do it over a three-step process. Nothing is done at the first meeting other than just getting to know each other and seeing how we how our, how our rapport is and seeing if we're a good fit. So that's exactly what you could expect at the discovery meeting. Give the uh, call to the number Ron gives you here in just a sec and spend an hour with myself on Zoom or in person. I would be happy to get you that discovery meeting. 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN, the number for Regary Financial. Call that number, leave your name and phone number. You'll get a call back, and then you can have a conversation uh, with uh, Logan Sadler, either via Zoom, or maybe you might want to come into one of the offices in Hemet or Redlands. Either way, you have that initial conversation. There's no charge for that, no obligation at all. You'll just get a lot of good information, and it's not going to cost you a dime. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. Logan Sadler is the name. He will be right back with more on today's edition of the Financial Beat after this timeout. At the end of the day, no one truly understands your financial wants and desires better than you. That's why it's important to have financial independence. This means you can work when you want, you know exactly where your income is coming from, and most importantly, your finances are stable. If this sounds like something you want, well, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. And Logan Sadler and his team at Regary Financial can provide you with their free guide on achieving financial independence. The free guide will show you how to create an action plan for getting to where you want to be. It'll explain how to calculate a financial independence goal. And it'll define what an ice egg is and why it's so important. Download it now by texting the word ADVICE to the number 21000. Again, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 to gain your financial independence today. This is the Financial Beat. Welcome back to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Brigary Financial. Logan is the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer, uh, offices in Hemet and Redlands, and we appreciate your listening to today's show. Logan Sadler works with all three generations of some of the client families at Brigary Financial. Many of those clients have been with this firm for more than 25 years years. That's a very long time. Logan would love to talk to you, but in order to make that happen, you need to reach out with a phone call. 888-823-PLAN. Just leave your name and your phone number. You'll get a call back and then you can make it happen. Uh, 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. Hey, Logan, I got a quote of the week here for you. I know you're going to love this one. This is from Winston Churchill. And Winston Churchill once said, saving is a very fine thing. 
especially when your parents have done it for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know anybody you, who fits in that category? I tell you what, I know we've done a few of his quotes on this show throughout the throughout the year, and it, it is he is classic, right? And yes, Ron, to answer your question, I do know quite a few people where this is their ideal retirement plan, right? I'm just yeah. going to work, spend my money, and enjoy it, and hopefully my parents leave me a good inheritance so I can retire successfully. You know, and so um, I will say, uh, you know, it's not the most ideal way to do it. And, and you would be surprised sometimes a lot of the clients I'm dealing with that do have a significant amount of wealth, a lot of the times it goes to charities or they spend it and enjoy it in their lifetime. So I always say, you know, don't necessarily count on on your parents as, as your retirement plan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not a good strategy at all. No, no. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some retirement demographics here. I've been doing a lot of reading about uh, this lately, and I thought you might enjoy uh, talking about it. How do you interpret uh, these specific demographic statistics? How, if at all, do they play a role in your planning process at Regary mm-hmm. Financial? Uh, first of all, people over the age of 65 currently make up 14% of our country's population. And mm-hmm. by the year 2030, they will make up 20% of the population. Wow. People are just living longer these days, They're right? living longer, yeah. It's, it's something where I, I think why you see the statistics go up there is because of you know, once you make it past that certain age, your your chances of living to that next uh, that next age group is very high, as you can see from the numbers. And I think one thing is our population is just aging very quickly. You know, the baby boomers are such a huge portion of the population, and it's something that's growing rapidly. And people, like you said, Ron, are just living longer. I think it's one of those things where one of the biggest risks when we're doing retirement plans is so many people plan on okay, I retire at sixty five, hopefully I make it to seventy five, and then I'm then then that's it, right? Well know a lot of our clients are working till sometimes age 65 or age 70 and they're living till age 85 or 90 so it's something where you really really got to plan for the longevity and the other one is the population is, is actually a huge majority of people as the statistic shows are taking money out of their retirement accounts, right? Out of the market. So that's something else that will that I think will affect the market over the next five or 10 years is how much money is coming out of the market just because of income needs, right? Yeah. So it's something where there's so many things that are going on as well as the demand for assisted living that's something we talk about. I know me and you are big, big uh, talkers on that, Ron. And you know, assisted living is something where you're going to see the need for that continue to increase as our population gets older. What's what that does is that drives up prices, right? So you could yeah. definitely expect those prices to continue to rise and continue to be a huge concern for that baby boomer generation. And and it's something I think will definitely translate into that next generation. But there's just a lot of those longevity risks that you really, really do have to worry about and plan for. Yeah, um, amazing how how much all those uh, all those charges can add up as well. Mm-hmm. And if you need to go into some kind of uh, assisted living facility or nursing home facility, uh, gosh, it can really uh, take away all your money. It, it uh, hits the bank. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, a 65 year old male is expected to live to the age of 83, but a 75 mm-hmm. year old man is expected to live until 86. I need to stop and think about that for a minute. Yeah. For, for a 65-year-old female, her life expectancy is 85. But for a 75-year-old woman, it's 88. Always yeah. living longer than us. <laughs> yeah, you were reading my mind. I think that's something where I, I kind of talked about this a little bit in the first one. But it's something where the statistics do show after you live past that certain age point, which shows right here about 65, your chances go up a lot higher now once we reach 75. And even for a woman, as we've always known, they do typically live longer. So it's something where when you're planning for that retirement, your life expectancy is going to continue to increase, um, especially throughout the next five or 10 years with the advances that we're having in in those demographics. So I think constructing a retirement plan that is expected to last your life expectancy or older is by far the way to go. I have so many people that, like I talked about, plan till age 75 or plan till age 80. Well, I mean, there's a huge population that live well past that. So what happens if we spend too much money too early? And I think that's something that we definitely, definitely cover in our retirement plans because it is a huge concern. And the other point, as I always like to say, is your uh, your life expectancy, you're, it's typically continuing to move, right? It's typically going up each of these years. So you're always going to kind of be chasing down that life expectancy. And it's very important to ensure that your portfolio has enough room for that long-term growth that we need. I think there's so much talk about retirement and, and when you retire, you should get really, really conservative because now you're retired. 
Well, in some aspects, yes, you should be scaling back back risk to some extent, but we also need this to grow and last another 25 years. So it's something where you got to make sure you're balancing that that you know bull versus the bear there and making sure that the retirement plan is going to be sufficient to grow, but also be designed for income in the meantime throughout those retirement years. So definitely a lot to, a lot to think about. I know one thing, planning for, uh, for your retirement, uh, financially speaking, would be a whole lot easier if we knew exactly how long we're going to live. Yeah, I always tell people we, we have a lot of planning, uh, planning software we use. And I always tell people that's one of the first questions I'll ask kind of as a joke, obviously, but is so when are you going to pass away? You know, I'll ask them very seriously. And it's funny because they kind of look at me funny, you know, but I'm, I'm totally joking. Obviously, we don't know that answer, but you're right. It would be so much easier if we knew that knew the day. Yeah, exactly. Here's another one for you, a demographic when it comes to retirement. People over the age of 65 generate income in several different ways. Uh, 37% from Social Security, 30% from actually working, 19% from pensions, and 11% from savings and investments. It's wow. really kind of uh, wild to just think about all that, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And, 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 you know, one of the biggest things I always say is if you think Social Security is going to be enough to make up, you know, almost half of your income, like in this case, yeah. it, you know, I have a lot of people that are making 100 to 200 to $300,000 a year. And if Social Security is going to pay you $2,800 a month, that's 33000 a year. That's, that's not near where we need to be for half of your income, right? So it's something where you look at these statistics and you really got to look and see how is the way, how can I get myself ahead of the curve? And one of the other biggest things I like to point out about this, Ron, is I believe you said pensions are around on this over 65 generation yeah. are about 19% mm-hmm. of, of the income. Exactly. I actually also read a statistic for the new workforce, meaning the people that are under 65, right. they only make up 3%. There's only 3% left that actually get pensions in the workforce. Oh my so you look at the people that have that younger generation, if you lose 19% of your income from that pension because there no, not a lot of these jobs are offering in them anymore, that's another huge income dip that we're going to have to make up by personal savings and investments. So there's a lot of these different risks that you really got to factor in to, uh, to retirement planning. And like you said, Ron, one of the best things I like to say is when you're planning for retirement, a lot of people have, you know, a 401k and IRA and social security is kind of how they're made up. And uh, what I always like to say is you want to have more than one income source, right? I think so many people, if they have a million dollars in their 401k, we take a million dollars, put it all in the market and put it in, uh, you know, a growth fund or growth and income fund. And we just take income from it and that social security. I always say is one of the more successful ways I see people actually get a good income in retirement is having several different income streams, right? You have things like, uh, we haven't talked a lot about them, but there's things like structured notes. Those are a really good income producing vehicle. You have things like dividends, stock market, real estate, annuities, social security, and pensions. So if we can get you three or four or five different types of income or cash flow in retirement, it's typically a much more diversified way and and a much more efficient way to transition into retirement to make sure that all of our income isn't is coming from one spot. That's something else I like to point out. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial, and we're talking about demographics when it comes to retirement. And here's something that's kind of scary to me, Logan. Between now and the year 2042, which is not really all that far away, the <laughs> baby boomer generation will pass down nearly $70 trillion to their mm. beneficiaries. And wow. for you know that, to me, just sends up a big red flag. It says, watch out because Uncle Sam is probably going to be after even more of that money than they can get now. <laughs> He's always there with his hand out, right? Yeah. Um, and and you, yeah, that's a staggering statistic. And I have heard that before. And I, obviously, it's something I see a lot with our clients. We have a lot of clients that it kind of goes a few ways in retirement, okay? Some people either work very, very hard and they have, you know, they save a million dollars, two million dollars for retirement. And they say, I'm going to spend every dime. I'm going to enjoy it. As we talk about, they want their last check to bounce. And we have some clients that are on the other spectrum where they've done the same thing. They've done a very good job, save for retirement, but they don't spend their money. You know, they've been in save mode their whole life, uh, 30 or 40 years throughout their working career. And now we have this bulk of money and they don't know how to spend it, right? They don't want to spend it. They're savers and they just don't think they're going to need it. And that's that huge population, like you were saying, Ron, that's going to leave down 70 trillion to beneficiaries. Hmm. Now, as the financial planner in me always, you know, likes to say is if we're not going to spend it, if we're not going to enjoy it, let's figure out a way to really get that legacy plan in order, whether it's charities or your kids. There's a lot of different ways to structure this so that it passes down tax efficiently. 
whether I always say, Ron, whether you're paying taxes on it, your kids, the charities, you want to make sure that we're paying the least amount of taxes possible, whoever's going to get it, right? The whole goal is Uncle Sam, you want him to get his fair share, but we don't want to be giving him more than we have to in a lot of circumstances. And I have a little example I've actually uh, want to talk through. It's actually it's actually a client of ours, mm-hmm. and uh, it's, it's Dan and Pam, and they, have, they had about a million dollars in just an IRA. Okay, they had other money, they had other income streams, but they had a million dollars in those IRAs. And basically, they weren't spending it, Ron. They were, they were, they were just taking the minimum distribution, but you know, the, the market's been good, so they've actually well replenished that over the last few years. So they had about a million dollars, and they were like, well, we're just going to leave that to our son, Matt. You know, and I think I was like, okay, perfect. So we've, I've met Matt before. He's came in the office, really nice guy. Matt makes $250,000 a year in income. Matt's doing a good job. He's not like that Winston Churchill quote, okay? He's actually doing a good job and saving for himself and doing and doing everything he needs to do. But he makes $250,000 a year. He's married, so his his federal income tax brackets right around 24%. So, I actually ran some some numbers for for Pam and Dan and was like, "Okay, we want this million dollar IRA to pass down to Matt." How would that look like and what would be the most efficient ways to kind of tax plan for it? And it's crazy because a lot of you guys might know the SECURE Act got passed in 2020. And so basically that allows uh, Mark, Matt, I'm sorry, has to take that IRA out over 10 years. So that million dollars has to be distributed to Matt over 10 years. Now that's quick math, right? That's $100,000 a year that he would have to take now that's all taxable. So in this circumstance, Mark, I'm sorry, I keep saying Mark, it's Matt. Matt would go from 30, he'd go from the 24% tax bracket to 32% tax bracket. So that's an 8% increase of taxes on that 100,000. And so what we were able to do for his parents, Dan and Pam, we were able to actually structure it to where we took a little bit amounts of money out each year and converted it into something more tax efficient that would pass on to their son, Matt. And so it was something where we were able to not only save them money on taxes, but also save the beneficiaries a ton of money on taxes. So little things like that, as far as tax planning and estate planning, are so important for those those uh, baby boomers out there that do have a lot of money sitting around that they're probably not going to touch. We got to make sure it's passing on efficiently, whether it's to charities or your son or your kids, and making sure that, again, it's going the most efficient way. And again, that's something that we always do touch on here at Regary Financial. We do look at more than just how invest investments work or what a good stock is, you really want to make sure you have an advisor that is looking at some of these big picture items, we call them, and making sure that you're doing more than the minimum, right? You want to make sure you're looking at things like tax planning, estate planning, and and making sure we're getting those, uh, not just talking about it, but making sure we're executing those. Because again, uh, eventually that clock runs out. And so we got to make sure while we do have the time, we're doing the most efficient things in the meantime to get that, to get those ideas pushed through and to get them done. And so uh, that's something at Regary Financial. Again, we're more than just a uh, portfolio manager or, or a stock picker. We really do pride ourselves on being financial planners and looking at the big picture. Logan, I know we have a lot of regular listeners to the show because we hear from a lot of them, but there may be some folks out there today who have just kind of stumbled onto the show and they're thinking, hey, this Logan Sadler makes a lot of sense. And they keep talking about a discovery meeting. What happens for the folks who who don't know this already? What happens when you come in for a discovery meeting? Yeah, well, I I hope they're saying I make a lot of sense, right? That's the goal. (laughs) But, um, (laughs) you know, uh, what happens at the discovery meeting? Those of you listening to the show have came in for it, you guys know it's basically you're going to call into the number Ron gives you, and it's really just a getting to know you. So many people are so stressed out when it comes to finances, and they're and they're you know nervous to show people how much money they got or how little they have or whatever the case is. And at the discovery meeting, it's really just a getting to know you. We talk very little about financials, and a lot of it is really just about getting to understand you, your family, and what it is you're trying to accomplish. So if you're one of those people that has done a good job, you have have saved good for retirement, and you're at that point where you're trying to get a retirement blueprint ready and trying to look at how this is going to look over the next five or 10 years. That's exactly what this discovery means for. Give us a call. It doesn't cost anything to sit down, talk, and just really get to understand each other and see if we would be a good fit to work together in the future. 888-823-PLAN. Hope you will write down that number if you haven't already. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number right now. Leave your name and phone number in a message. You'll get a call back and then you can have a, a discovery meeting with
with Logan Sadler. You can be uh, in one of the offices in Hemet or Redlands, or you may want to do it on uh, Zoom, uh, whatever the case may be. It's a good way to get acquainted, and it's not going to cost you one penny and not going to obligate you to do anything beyond that. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. That number is for Regary Financial. I'm Ron Stutz, along with Logan Sadler. We have more coming up in just a moment on today's edition of the Financial Beat. Don't you want to see sharp and not be flat in retirement? This is the Financial Beat. We're back now with more of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. And uh, Logan Sadler hosts educational seminars and webinars on estate planning, retirement income, taxes and retirement at local universities and senior centers, as well as online. Hasn't done as much of that kind of thing because of uh, the pandemic situation we've had in the last couple of years. But one of these days, you can get back to normal on doing all that. The point is, Logan Sadler loves educating folks, and that's a lot of what he does every single day. Folks come in and have a conversation. They will be guaranteed to learn something, and I think that's one of the things he's really good at. If you'd like to have a conversation with Logan, we call it a discovery meeting, a getting-to-know-you session, 888-823-PLAN. That's 888 888- 823 plan that's your number to call 888-823-7526 but remember the word plan because that is so important if you fail to plan you're planning to fail 888-823 plan all about getting you to and through retirement hey logan i got a, a history lesson here for everybody 152 years ago february 12 1870 Utah became the first state in the country to allow women to vote in state and municipal elections. How about wow. that? Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I, 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 know that, uh, I didn't know that Utah was the first, so that's interesting. See, even I learned something on this show. Um, that is awesome. 152 years. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, Look how far we've come. Yeah, I, uh, I'm just alarmed when I look back at some of the things in history. You know, yeah. having to do with the women's rights and all that kind of thing. It's just so ridiculous. And some, yeah. of, the, some of those things have just, you know, <laughs> you know, they were, there was a long time when women could not hold checking accounts on their own. I yeah. Mean, I, it's, it's amazing. You think, you think about how, how was that even a time, right? Yeah. It's, it's amazing where we're at today. Yeah, it's so sad. And, and some of those things weren't even that long ago, you know. So yeah, it's right. just crazy. And let's go to the mailbag here for something that makes a little bit more sense. And the first question here today is from Marty in Paris. And Marty says, I've never used a budget in my whole life. Do I need to start budgeting now that I'm about to retire? Well, Marty, uh, great question. Thanks for writing in. Appreciate you listening to the show. For any of those those of you out there like Marty, yes, you need to definitely get a budget together. Of course, you're asking a financial planner that, right? So you do need to get a budget together. I always like to say, um, if you're married, you know, you and your wife have a glass of wine or, or, or a cup of coffee or whatever, whatever, whatever you like, and uh, do a budget together. It's really important to kind of see where your money goes each month. Uh, some people that don't have a budget budget still will do well saving sometimes. I've seen it the other way, where sometimes people make a hundred to two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars a year, and they don't know where their money goes at the end of the at the end of their twenty or thirty year working career. They have fifty thousand dollars in an IRA, and they don't know what happened to the rest of it. You know, so having that budget will really just kind of show you where your money goes, whether it's entertainment, uh, bills, car payments, wherever it goes. It's really important to establish what your monthly budget would look like. Because that's really important. One of the first questions I'll ask when we're transitioning to retirement is, how much income do we need to cover our bills? And then we can start building out, after we've covered our bills, how much do we need to cover for vacations and things that we want to do in retirement? So if we don't have that baseline budget, it's really, really hard to kind of have an idea of what we want to plan for in retirement. So yeah, Marty, I would definitely, and uh, I would be glad to help with that if you did have some questions on how to budget. Uh, If you've done a good job saving for retirement and you're in that situation where you're looking at how much income am I going to need in the future based off what I have, I'd be happy uh, to cover that with you. All right. Great question today from Marty. And uh, Marty, hope that helps. But again, you can call that number and talk more in detail about all of that. 888-823-PLAN. Next question here is from Sam in Marina Valley. And Sam says, I have a home in the mountains that I bought 30 years ago for $250,000. I use it a lot, but also get some rental income from it. I could sell it right now for almost a million. It's tempting to take that money and run, but I'm worried about the tax implications of that. Mm-hmm. Should I just keep it so I don't have to pay taxes on a big sale? 
Yeah, that's a that's a really great question, Sam. First off, again, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for writing in. Uh, and congratulations. It looks like you made a great investment there. And that's that's how it works. Most people expect returns over the, over a very short period of time. But how it really works is over the long run. You look at your scenario. You bought a house for 250 and it's worth over a million. That's a, that's a return almost anybody would take. So to answer your question more specifically, I think the biggest thing is there'd be a couple factors I would look at here is number one, how much income do you get from the rental? Uh, and how, how much would it cost us to replace that income if we did sell? Because again, we don't want to take a dip in income. As well as, I always like to ask this, when I know we talk about this a lot as well, Ron's on, on board with this as well, is basically, do you want to be a landlord? I know a lot of people, as they get closer and closer to retirement, or maybe they're in retirement and they're getting a little bit older each year, that birthday comes around, they might not want to be a landlord anymore. You might not want to rent it out. It might be kind of a hassle. And it is the top of the market as of right now, so it might be a good time to sell. So there's a couple different factors in there you want to look at. I'm never on board with just, hey, the house made money, let's sell it. It's got to make sense. So you want to look at those three factors. Number one, how are we going to replace the income? Number two, um, do you want to be a landlord anymore? Is that something you still wanted to do? And number three, is the tax implications worth it for what you're trying to do? And I think those are the three things I look at when we're gonna when we're gonna talk about selling properties. Because yeah, I have had a lot of clients where it is a great time to sell property if it's something you've thought about doing over the last few years. You know, there's is a really great time. Is it the best ever? You know, who knows what the future is gonna hold? But currently, it is a pretty dang good time historically to sell if it was something you were considering doing. So I would love to uh, sit down and kind of crunch the numbers with you. We also have a CPA that we could loop in uh, to see how that works and see what the tax implications would be and to see if it makes sense. Okay, uh, last question today, and you're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. Once again, that number is 888-823-PLAN. One more question today. It's from Wendy in Calamesa. Wendy says, my husband died in a motorcycle wreck two months ago, and I'm just now starting to sort through our financial matters. He was 51, I'm 49. I'm about to receive a significant amount of life insurance, and I was planning to pay out the house with it, but somebody told me I shouldn't pay it off because interest rates are so low. Is it a bad idea to pay it off with this money? Yeah, you know, first off, uh, first off, just just uh, sorry for your loss. That's something about our, our job. I, it's not the fun part is dealing with with stuff like this. But um, sorry for your loss. You know, the biggest thing with this, Wendy, is a lot of people will say don't pay your house off for a few reasons. Like you said, the interest rates. If you got a two or three percent interest rate on that, uh, you probably could do pretty a lot better than that investing the money. And then using that to pay for the payment. And there's a lot of different other variations that I could show you that would make sense of why not to pay it off. Uh, it would all come down to, I would say, how much money did you get from the life insurance? And then it would factor in what other assets do we have to work with to get us where we need to go. And what I mean by that is, you know, you're young, you know, 51 years old and 49 years old. You guys are both very young. And for him to pass away, you're at that point where you might want to retire in the next five to 10 years, right? So it's something or, or 10 to 15 years, depending on how long you want to work. So it would depend on what our budget is, how much of expenses we have each month. Are you going to stay in the house? Is it somewhere you wanted to stay? Can you maintain it yourself? There's a lot of variations, I would say, but that also are outside the financial realm to see if we want to, to pay it off or not. But typically from the financial standpoint, which is probably what you're asking me as a financial advisor, uh, typically it doesn't make sense to take that money and pay the house off if we could do better investing it um, or just being able to keep that money liquid in case other things come up. So there's a lot of variations I would like to cover there with you. And again, I have a lot of experience, unfortunately, in this realm. So be happy to sit down with you and go over uh, what makes sense and, and if it's worth doing or not. Yeah. And as we always say, it's uh, really tough to make very important financial decisions when you're in an emotional state, and I'm sure Wendy is still in an emotional state, and that's another good reason to come in and have a conversation with Logan Sadler about this situation. Make sure that everything you're doing is level-headed and, uh, you know, think it all through because it's a very big deal, that's for sure. Logan, I know a lot of folks uh, may be tuning into this show for the first time today, and certainly we appreciate all our regular listeners. We get a lot of uh, clients uh, out of uh, those listeners who've been listening to the show for quite some time. And you have built up quite a, a base of clients, families over the years. And I know you enjoy working with all of those folks and helping them along the way. 
Yeah, you're right, Ron. We've met so many great people doing this radio show. So many of you guys have called in, came in for that discovery meeting, came on board as clients, and and uh, we always appreciate the trust and the uh, and that satisfaction we get of just being able to help somebody find a solution. You know, I, I really do pride ourselves on not being uh, you know stuck to any one product or any type of investment or any type of philosophy, but really sticking to what is the best solution for this client. And uh, it's really done well for us over the years, and we really do appreciate each and every one of you listeners. So if you're a new listener out there, have been listening for a while and have just been kind of wanting to get another second opinion or, or to get a financial plan together. And again, you've done a good job saving for retirement and you're getting closer and closer and you're trying to get that retirement blueprint together. Give us a call. I'd be happy to sit down with you, spend an hour and take a deep dive into your retirement. The number to call to get that deep dive at no cost and no obligation, 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN. Call that number today. Leave your name and your phone number. You'll get a call back from Regary Financial. Then you can make it happen. doesn't matter if you're in Rancho Cucamonga, uh, Boma, Temecula, Menifee, Orange County, Loma Linda, Corona, wherever you are. Call that number and you can make it happen. You can have a conversation with Logan Sadler at the office in Hemet or the one in Redlands, or maybe you might want to do it via Zoom or some other form of technology. They can make it happen for you either way. 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN. Logan, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you for a while today, and I know you're going to get a lot of phone calls from folks out there, and uh, I'm already looking forward to next week's show. Yeah, I appreciate your time, Ron. Appreciate each of you listeners, and it's just always great to hop on the radio, do a good show, and uh, obviously keep it educational. And also, you know, we got to have a fun, we got to have some fun along the way. So yeah. appreciate each of you guys, and looking forward to next week. I'm going out to get some gas station sushi right now. Yeah. <laughs> Not advised. Eight 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 two three plan. That's your number to call for Regary Financial. And once again, join us next time for the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities.